everyone, it's Elspeth Hewitt, social media editor at Bicycling Magazine. I'm here with Celine Yeager, Fit Chick, Hello. and we're going to talk about fat bikes and where you should use them and where you shouldn't. Um, Celine's done some fat bike racing recently, so she has some pretty good I've done insight. quite a bit of fat bike racing. So, when should you ride a fat bike? Um, there are some people, and I'm going to qualify this because I don't want all those the fat bag people I know who ride them everywhere all the time to get angry with me. There are some people who ride them all the time everywhere, and that is um, mysterious to me, but they love them, and that's 100% cool. You know, if that's what your thing is, that's what your thing is. No judgment. It's a safe space. <laughs> um, but I think that having raced them in all kinds of terrain and weather and conditions, they are not, as some people think, magical snow machines. They don't magically float over all snow, so if it's mushy or deep, or just mushy and deep, they, it's hard going. You know, you're going to be slipping around, it's kind of hard going. Where they shine the brightest is um, the places where they were born and make most sense, where you have um, miles and miles of groomed like snowmobile trails. Like if I lived in Maine with endless snowmobile tra you know, train and it's... Uh, very cold and the snow stays kind of crunchy. They are kind of magical. They're really perfect because you've got a lot of tire, you got a lot of tread. Um, you can just go over the surface and it just ride for miles. It's really, really pretty cool. So, and the tires, what defines a fat bike is big wide tires. You're looking at at least 3.84 inches. Uh, this one actually comes spec. This is the Specialized Helga, women's specific fat bike. This one comes spec with the Ground Control Specialized, which are great tires, but they are. 4.8s, and for the race that I just did, I did not need that much tire, so I took it down a bit to the Jumbo Gyms, uh, <laughs> just because it better suited my needs. How do you feel about fat bikes on sand and the beaches? Really fun. There's a there's a race in, um, I believe it's Jersey, that's where they have sand. There's a race in Jersey where they do race them across the sand, and um, that's another place that people often buy them, and they're, they're perfect for sand, because rarely the sand, and it, even if you're on dunes, you rarely sink that much. You're able to hover over it because sand is so dense. You're able to ride on top of it even when it's soft. So they're super, super fun for sandy conditions. Awesome. When aren't they so fun? They are not fun when, like I said, when the snow is deep and mushy, there's nothing fun about them. Um, I did a uh, cross, couple cross races on them. They're interesting on a cross course, but I think what I discovered is that sometimes fatter is not better like in a cross course because I'd come into a corner and I would just hydroplane across the whole thing and lay it over sideways where if I had been on my cross bike I would have actually hooked up and caught you know dug in a little bit better so it's a, it's it's been an interesting experiment to see just where they are I also personally find them a little hard going on super technical rocky single track like we have here but on smooth trails they're they're quite fun Awesome. Mike was wondering if the tubes are pricier. If the tubes are pricier. Yeah. Um, fat bikes in general don't tend to be that pricey. This mm -hmm. is not a carbon. Um, Borealis makes some really high-end bikes. I have a friend who races them, and his Borealis weighs 21 pounds, which is insane. Um, this is an alloy bike. Uh, they, they tend not to run as expensive as a regular mountain bike, mostly because they don't have the same suspension components. So this bike, I think... You'd have to look it up. I think we have it up as three, two, three. Um, I I'm think we have it right here. Um, is this an expert, Helga? Um, oh, maybe. It is the, I think it's the top of the line, Helga. It's about $2,400. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Maria was wondering if you ride tubeless on yours. I have tried both, and honestly, on a fat bike... I'm not sure there's a whole lot of weight savings either way. Only because you have to put a whole lot of stands or sealant or whatever you use inside these tires. I mean, it's ludicrous how much sealant they take. And they're pretty durable tires, so I, you're not really going to pinch flat. I mean, the, the, the advantage with tubeless is always that you can go lower, right? You can run these things at 3 PSI. That's a little squirmy for my take if you, if you go um, tubeless. But I have also just been 100% fine with tubes. Awesome. Um, Brian was wondering where you got your hat. I got this hat in Israel. <laughs> I did the race, it's a stage race in Israel, and they give you a hat uh, for showing up. So, yes, this is my hot, epic Israel hat. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so what makes this bike women-specific? 
It's got massive standover, which we can debate all day if it's really necessary, but a lot of um, a lot of women's bikes come with standover, a lot of standover clearance. This has a lot of standover clearance. That sort of comes with some expense because sometimes when you do a long, I've done like 120 mile fat bike races, right? And it's nice to have one of those, they have bags that you can put your food in here. So you, your triangle space gets a little limited. So you have to sort of pick and choose what's more important to you. Um, I do like that this has the little SWAT tool here. And it's, um, it's got like the women specific saddle, women specific touch points. It's, it's, it's their ge geometry. And um, you know, I, I ride a lot of specialized bikes and it rides a lot like a specialized, just with really big fat tires. Awesome. Um, is, this har is it harder to break on a fat bike? Is the experience different? Um, it's a little different. Uh, the rim, you know, disc brakes, I've never ridden one with rim brakes, I don't think they exist. Disc brakes stop almost anything. I mean, they stop a motorcycle, right? So it's, what's harder is the maneuverability because sort of like if you've ever ridden a motorcycle, it's this, a similar sensation where you're not steering it quite the same way. You're, there's a lot more body English involved with it. So you're really sort of leaning into it a little more because you've got those big fat tires. So it takes a little more leaning, less working, that kind of thing. They're not, they're not quite as nimble, though I will say that this is one of the more nimble ones that, I, that I've read, uh, ridden on. I have a, I've ridden a couple others that are really just great straight line, go across Alaska kind of, kind of deal. Awesome. Um, yeah. I know you mentioned earlier, what tire pressure are, do you normally run? I have um, nine in the front and ten in the back right now. You can go as low as three to five, but and, and I know people who do. I don't like that squirmy feeling. I mean, I know people that do that on their cyclocross bikes, too. They'll go super low, and I just, have, I, I just never like that squirminess on the, once you hit anything solid. But if you're going to be on snowmobile trails all day, I would... Go down to five, six, you know, maybe maybe eight. Depends on your weight, like anything else. Cool. Um, do you feel like these are just a fad, or do you think they'll gain more momentum? Um, both. So I think that they they saw this crazy surge two or three years ago in popularity, like everybody was getting fat bikes, and then as I sort of mentioned before, they're not these magical snow hovercrafts that maybe some people thought that they were going to be, and you know, now, um, especially with 27.5 plus, that is going to eat into some of the fat bike market because that 27.5 plus is, is still a big fat tire, but it's on a regular, quote unquote, regular mountain bike with full suspension. It handles very much like a regular mountain bike. And for somebody who loves the stabi stability and the traction of the big tire, you get that with the 27.5 plus. I think that's one of the most fun tire sizes I've ever ridden, frankly. Um, but they're intended for different things. You know, these are really when you want like something, an enormous tire for a lot of contact patch, and that would be sand, and that would be, you know, snow and that kind of thing. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Rich was wondering, is there enough cushion from the tires that you don't need suspension? Most of the time. Most of the time. I, I won't lie. Um, I, I did a, an event on some really choppy snow. It, was, it, it got super cold. It got into the 20s, and the snow had been, like, trampled on and hiked on. And my, my arms were killing me by, by the end of it just because it was so choppy. This, um, even though this is alloy, this fork is very forgiving. And um, I found, even though we were on some choppy terrain, and I raced this bike very recently on this similar course, uh, I wasn't, it didn't hurt quite as much. I wasn't as sore. But sometimes... I do feel like, and there are ones that come with the Bluto fork. I think it's still the only fat bike fork that they make, um, barring the, the one on the Cannondale, which is their own proprietary fork. Sometimes I feel like having some, a fork on the front would be, would make it perfect. Just to take that, for the same reason you want a fork on anything, it just takes some of that impact and vibration off of you, especially if you're going a long time on rough ground. Great. Um, Nicholas was wondering what width do you prefer, prefer? Four, four point five, or five. I have never gone five, but I really liked when the guy in front of me was riding five and breaking ground <laughs> and this race before because I could stay right in his tread. Um, four point five is super fun on um, on like on mixed terrain trail because you have all that tire and all that contact patch. It, I find it a little overkill when I'm on uh, towpath snowmobile trails, that kind of thing where. 
I just don't feel like I need that much tire. So these are, um, I think these are just fours. Uh, these I found pretty perfect for most of what I do. And they are, uh, yeah, they're fours, 4.0. Awesome. Um, do you want to talk about your garments a little bit? Those are pretty unique. These are awesome. Um, these, especially for that kind of race, the, the, what these allow you to do, they're just neoprene. They slip over, you can see, you know, so my hand just goes right in there. They're over my, my levers and my brakes. Um, what these allow is that you don't have to wear a thick winter glove. I've done events that are in the 20s, and I can wear just a, a pretty, you know, like a warm glove, but nothing real bulky, and that your hands stay warm. And you can still eat. I can still take my hand out, put it in my pocket, get food, do with that stuff. When you have those big, like lobsters, forget it. I mean, you just can't do anything with them. So it enables you to have like nimble fingers, which is awesome. And um, if it's windy or anything else, like it cuts down on that as well. So And they're super light. Where they don't shine as much as, you know, I've done some single track stuff on them. And if you need to, for whatever reason... Uh, if you're falling, let's say, and you need to take your hands off the bar and grab something, it, it's not as awesome <laughs> because you're kind of stuck in the moose mitt and you're going down with the moose mitt. But, um, you know, that's, they're not really made for single track riding. They're made more for sort of out in the open. And, and for that, and they're cheap. I mean, it's just neoprene. They're super cheap. You can go 45 north and buy Cobra Fists that are $150, but unless you're Unless you're doing some crazy sub-zero stuff, I don't think that's necessary. Awesome. And then the brand is just called Barmets. Barmets. Right? Yeah, they're super generic. They're awesome. They, um, you know, they zip up so you can ventilate them a little bit too. If they get too hot, you can open it up and let some air through. Uh, they'll last a long time. They're just, they're just a cool accessory to have. I've, I've used them quite a bit over the over the years because I ride all winter. And they're also, unlike gloves, they're um, waterproof. Which is a huge, oh, it's like a wetsuit, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a huge benefit. Um, Tony was wondering with the bike, do you experience self steer much? A little. Not a whole lot, but a little. Um, it's vaguely terrifying to ride in a pack in these things. Like some of these races I've done, it's actually a Peloton of fat bikes going fast. You know, like they're, they're, they're going sort of whole shoddy, so it's going 17 to 22 miles an hour. And there's a, lot, there's a lot more movement with them because of some of that self-steering. And crashes are terrible. When, they, <laughs> when, when, when one person clips something, it's, it's unbelievable oh, what gosh. happens. Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, you know, it, it sharpens your reflexes. I, I, I just wrote about the benefits. Like, I think, for me personally, one of the things that I really love is that it keeps me fresh. Um, I, the, the, I like doing different things throughout the season so I don't get bored or I don't get burned out. And I have found that spending, you know, I do maybe three, four fat bike races in the off, quote unquote, off season. And A, it makes you mad strong because you're pushing so much bike and so much tire and a lot of them are flat. So it's stuff that, it's like riding for five hours on the rollers with a lot of persistence. Um, you know, and it's just, it's just kind of fun. So, I mean, I think that there's a benefit to having one of these in your in your quiver, so to speak, if you have places to ride them, because it just changes things up for you. Great. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Jonathan is wondering what your Instagram handle is, though. It's FitChick3. So, awesome. Yeah. So you can go find her on Instagram then. Yeah, some pictures of this, some pictures of me <laughs> on this. <laughs> if you watch this later and you have more questions for Celine about fat bikes, uh, just write them in the comments, and Celine will get back to you later today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Ciao.